Hey there. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a bracelet that uses a buckle. So what this bracelet is going to have in it, it's going to be a series of single half hitch knots that are going to kind of look like a bit of lace on either side of the beads. The knots on this particular project are really simple, the square knot. We're going to have single half hitch knots and done in columns and then we're going to have double half hitch knots to finish the bracelet at the end. And it comes out really cute looking. So let's get started. An interesting th thing that I've noticed about a buckle and the obvious, obvious things, which, which way it goes to close appropriately. So you'll notice that on the buckle, there's a bit of a little divot right there. And that's where it fits against the upper edge. So that's the proper setting for the buckle. The challenge with this piece is making sure your buckle is facing the right direction and that this little tabby is in the right place while you're working your piece. If you don't pay attention to that very carefully, it is easy to get off track with your piece and wind up having your buckle backwards. I know this because I've done it already. <laughs> All right, so that's my word of caution. So what we're using here is we're using knit, knit uh, crocheting cord. Basically this is the crochet cotton cord and I've got five pieces of it here. This piece is two feet long. I've got two pieces that are five feet long and two pieces that are seven feet long. And we'll go over why these are different lengths. And this particular two foot long piece is actually going to be the center cord that our beads are going to be attached to. And yes, they're going to be beads. And these are the beads and we'll see the sequence shortly. And the way I'm going to be attaching them to the cord is with a large eye needle. It just makes it easier to get this really soft cord through the beads. All right. And also what we're going to use, we're going to use a little bit of scrapped wax linen to make sure the little tongue on our belt stays where it's supposed to be. Alright, to get started we're going to attach the center cord which the beads are going to hang off of first and because the beads will only lace through a single strand of the cord I'm going to be attaching it unevenly to the belt buckle to the buckle and the reason for that is that part of, we're going to attach it with the round turn lark's head knot because it's a bit more secure than just the regular lark's head knot. And then we're going to do an overhand knot to secure it even more and then capture this short tail in a few square knots and then we'll clip off this short end and it'll be out of the way and then we'll proceed to adding the beads to the longer end of the cord. So let's get started. So where we want to work from is with the buckle. You want to make sure that the tongue is in the right position and that you'll be working down from the buckle. So we want to do our round turn lark's head knot, which means we're going to have to flip that open to get our cord in. And now we want to put the tongue back where it belongs and pull our cord through the buckle from the back side. And this is when we where we do the round turn lark's head knot. So first we drop our cords down through the loop like for a regular lark's head knot, but since we're going to do a round turn, we're going to take what's called a bite 
out of each side which basically is taking the cord that we've just dropped down through and pulling it back around the outer edge and dropping it back down through the opening again. And we're going to work it up to close our round turtle arcs head knot up really close to the buckle. And what we're wanting to do is the cord we want it to rest right alongside the buckle tongue in the grooves that are on either side of it. And the reason we're wanting to do that is so we've got more room on either side for the rest of the cords that we're going to be bringing in. This just takes a little finessing to get it to slide over and into the groove. Okay, so we've got it where we want it. And so now we're going to do an overhand knot just to secure the ends of the cord. Mostly to give extra security to our lark's head knot that it's going to stay in position. And my cords are just wanting to tangle up as I'm easing the knot up as close to the top as possible. There it goes. It's a little better. So I'm just easing this overhand knot up as close to the top of the cord as possible, pulling it really securely tight. Alright, now to make sure this little guy stays where he's supposed to go, I'm going to secure him with this piece of scrap or all linen. Well, wax linen, the wax linen cord. So I just made a loop with the cord, just uh, put the two ends through to catch the tongue with the loop. I'm just going to cross the cords and bring them back over the top and back through again. That's just making sure that I've got this nice and tight and my little tongue is not going to be flapping around and getting in my way. Alright, once I've got that done, I'm just going to tie a knot. It doesn't need to be a square knot. It can just be what my daddy used to call a granny knot. Although that did actually come out to be a square knot. And then I'm going to trim off the excess, just so this is out of the way and secure. And there's going to be another thing we're going to have to do once we get our other cords on here and get our first set of square knots tied before we add anything else. All right. So these are the five foot long cords. These are the shorter cords. And what these are going to be are these are going to be this is half of our tying cords and we are actually going to match up the ends to get the absolute center for attaching to our base here. So we're just for this because there is not a lot of space right here we're only going to do a regular lark's head knot. There's not the room to do a round turn. Lark said not on the sides for the rest of the cord. So it's just a matter of lacing your cord through behind and back up underneath the bar. And dropping the long ends down through the loop and pulling it up tight. 
That's one of the five foot long cords and the other five foot long cord is going to go on the opposite side and that's the lark's head knot for the inner tying cords. Now we have the outer tying cords. Now these are seven feet long and the reason they're seven feet long is because we're going to be doing some fancy knot work on the outer edge which is going to take up a lot more cord than the inner cord is going to be taking up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to measure out one foot length and that is actually how much longer one side is going to be than the other side. So we're going to match our end up at the one foot at the mark for being one foot in. Now's the tricky part. We need to make sure which side of the cord is which. Okay, so the inner side of the cord is the short side and the outer side of the cord is the long side and that's actually how it's supposed to be. So this is the proper orientation for our loop for going onto the buckle for the half hitch knot. So it's really important at this point to keep the loop orientation correct. So our cords down below are in the right place. And again, this is the challenge part, is getting bottom half of the loop to come back through the buckle in the correct position. And also for dropping our cord back down through the loop. This is also where we have to do a little extra finessing to make sure our cords are laying next to each other. The inner tying cords with the outer tying cords. Pulling them nice and tight to make sure they're lining up correctly. Also, so we're going to double check coming down our cord lengths that we're still matching up our four cords that we now have because we've doubled up the original and coming down to see how things have come out for the ends. And so here we have our five foot length cord ending which is appropriate, we should see that. And then the other cord, we've got its intersection ending here and the outer length of cord going down farther. So we've got that attached correctly. Now we get to do the same on the other side. So now we're going to do our first set of square knots on here and then we're going to do another extremely important step. So be patient with me. So I'm just going to pin my buckle down. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the inner cords for tying these square knots. And what these square knots are doing, it's just going to be three square knots and what they're doing is they're actually securing the center cord that we've got for our beading to be hanging hanging off of and also seriously securing the short part of the cord which we're going to be snipping off after we tie our three square knots so that way we know this isn't going to pull out of our knot 
here at the top. And that's what these first three square knots are going to be, be doing. And three. Okay, so those are all very nice and tight and secure. So what we're going to do now is this stray little short cord is going to get snipped off. And I'm going to snip it as close to the, the knot as possible and without cutting any of the other cords. It's important not to cut the other cords. Okay. All right. So now we're going to make sure we identify all right, this is where we do the most important part of the entire piece. If you don't do this, it's not going to work out right. So what we have to do is we have to shove all of our cords back through the buckle. And we'll be working our knots from this point down. What this the reason we had to do it this way, we have to push it back through and work it on this side because otherwise your belt, your bracelet will be over the top of this part and when we get to the end, it, your the buckle won't work because you'll have this part covered up with the bracelet and the beads won't allow you to pass the cords through after the beads are on. So we have to do it before the beads are on. So now we're going to pin this down on the board and get going. All right, so what I want to do is I want to make sure I identify which one of these middle cords, this one, is the cord that all the beads are going to be placed on. And what I'm going to do right now is I am going to string all the beads onto the cord and then tie a knot a simple knot that'll be easy to get off later on so the, the beads won't fall off. That way, this way you're not stopping and restringing your stringing beads all the time throughout the project. You've got them done all at once once. So I just open up my large eye needle, put my cord through it and then start stringing my beads and the sequence is it's going to be a clear blue clear blue clear blue clear blue clear and it's going to start and end with a clear bead okay so now I'm just folding the cord over and doing a simple knot at the end just an overhand knot and what this is going to do is it's going to keep the beads from sliding off the end of the cord while I'm working the rest of the bracelet. All right, so what we're going to do is bring up the first bead and I'm going to use another T-pin and pin down my center cord. Just to keep it from sneaking away. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to be doing a pattern of six rows of square knots to where it's going to be two knots in the first row, the second row will have a single knot, the third row is gonna have two knots and so on until we get down to our sixth row which will just have the center single knot and that's when we slide our bead up into position.
so now we're going to bring our first bead up and below this bead is where we're going to be tying a square knot but we want these these two loose cords to get caught up in the square knot here as well but we need them to try to stay behind the bead as much as possible so when we tie this square knot we're going to be pulling it up really tight below the bead to where we make the bead pop forward This takes just a little bit of extra finessing. To get our back cords to behave themselves. So this time, you're actually going to be pulling this knot up really tight to where it actually pulls a little bit behind the bead and that's what's going to make it pop up and be up higher than the cords because that is the effect we're going for here so when we get the second half of the square knot pulled up tight this, this square knot is actually more foundational than, um, well, it's foundational. It's not just decorative. And then we're going to pull our other cords that are behind the bead down a little tighter just to make sure they stay behind our bead. So we really don't want these cords that are behind it to be popping up alongside of it because that will detract from the next part that we're going to do. Alright, so now we want these center tying cords to be a little bit out of our way. So I'm just going to wrap them around the pin there a little bit to keep them out of their way, out of the way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be tying single half hitch knots and the way we do that is the cord goes over the top this the tying cord goes over the top of the, the core center cord the core cord comes up through the loop and then we just pull it up to the top and we get it to where it's snug but not excessively tight and this should take eight knots going alongside this bead so let's get them done and this is working from the left side so if you have trouble working the knot with your left hand you can you can hold the cord with your left hand and tie this knot on the left side with your right hand so let me show how that's done so with the right hand Again, you're just pulling it up, just doing a little bit, a little backhanded a bit. Harder for me to show you that way. But again, I, I pulled it up to where it's snug. So that's three knots. So I'm going to continue to work this with my left hand. Okay, so that's 10 of those knots. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a square knot to anchor what we just did to where it'll stay flat. So we need to bring out the other two cords for this side and making sure that you keep the cords going the direction they need to go. And again, you, you'll need to be pinching this and basically your finger pressing. Just how sometimes you finger press while doing some sewing projects. 
All right, now we're going to do a square knot. Now this square knot is going to be a really tight one as well because it's a foundational knot. And you'll, you'll see it, but it's not as important for it to be big and fluffy the way we've got the knots up here. So we need to make sure that it pulls up tight against the bottom edge of the half hitch knots to make sure that they're going to stay in alignment and secure. So it's tied up against the half hitch knots and the square knot that's underneath the bead. So here's the second half of our square knot. And again, you're going to pull this one really tight. And you can see pulling it tight is making it really small. So it's almost going to disappear once we start getting all of these half hitch knots and the beads up in place. They won't be as noticeable. So now we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to do 10 half hitch knots alongside of our bead. And what's that, what it's doing is it's giving this lacy sort of look to it. All right, so at this point we get to bring up our next bead. And we're just going to continue what we did previously. We're going to, again, take our center tying cords. And we're going to be tying a square knot below the blue bead with the two outer cords. And I found one way to do this is to actually get the basic knot already in position to where you've you've basically you've got your knot there and you're just going to be pulling it up into place and making sure we have our center cords where they're supposed to be pushing you push your bead up as tight to the previous bead as possible because that's going to what's going to cause our beads to pop forward because we're keeping them tight we're doing the square knot as tight as possible up underneath the bead and actually the knot is going to be slightly behind the bead uh, from coming from underneath and then we're going to tug on these two center cords that they're going to be as tight and pop behind our bead as well to keep our beads popped forward. All right, so again, we're going to secure our center cord so it stays taut and out of the way. It also gives us a spot to wrap these these four cords around on the the t-pin while we're working the rest of this so what we're going to do now is we're going to repeat we're going to repeat the the 10 half hitch knots again coming down the sides of the speed and this bead is actually looking to be a little shorter than that bead so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do eight half hitch knots alongside this bead and let's look at all of our beads together I think there's a slight variation in lengths on the beads so it's going to be 
how the bead looks against the, the cord for the length to determine whether it's going to be, it's either going to be 10 or 8 of the half hitch knots alongside the bead and that's going to depend on the bead's length. Now the next white one and there's just a slight variation on length between these beads. So the high probability what's going to be happening is we're going to have a series of 10 and 8 and 10 and 8 for the half hitch knots alongside the bead. And again this is an adjustment that you'll have to make by sight on the beads that you choose to make this project with. Alright, so I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera and then when I come back I'll have all of the beads up with all the half hitch knots done and then we'll take care of the other end of the bracelet. Back in a bit. Okay, so we're back. So I've got all of the single half hitch knots flanking each of the beads and it turns out that each set next to the beads, these are eight half hitch knots. The reason this was 10 was because of this extra gap up here at the top. So yay, that was that was good to, good to realize. So it's eight half hitch knots on each of these and then I did an additional after I did the foundational knots to finish off the half hitch. So we've got the square knot underneath the, the last bead. We've got the square knots to close off the half hitch knot sections. And then we've got an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 rows. And the square knot's finished with a single one here because we're setting up to do a chevron pattern with double half hitch knots now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pin this down. Oh, and another thing. The extra center cord that I was using for the beads, after I got past the third square knot in the center right there, I snipped it off. And so it's no longer, so it's totally secure in there because the the square knot here at the under the last bead and the next two square knots, I made them pretty tight. So it's really hanging on to that cord. So it should stay secure where it's at. All right, so now we're going to do our chevron with the double half hitch knots. And what we're going to do is we're going to do three rows. So I'm going to start from the left side. You could, it doesn't matter which side you start from, either left or right. So the double half hitch knot. So your core cord for the double half hitch knots will always come over the top of the cords that you're tying with. So the first one is over the top of the cord and down into the left. And you're going to ease that up. And then the next one, again the same, over the top and down through the loop on the left. Alright, and then the next cord, I'm going to do the first half hitch. and then the second half hitch. And what we're being careful to do is maintain, we're establishing our chevron shape here. And it doesn't go terribly far, so it's not that dramatic of a shape at this point. It'll, right now, it's rather subtle, the chevron shape. As we get the subsequent rows, it's going to become more visible. Alright, so there's the first three cords tied on for the half hitch knot. Then we're going to take the cord from the far right and bring it over the top of the other cords and do the right hand side of our double half hitch knot. So over the top 
and to the right. And we're going to ease it up to the top, maintaining our loop on the top of the cord. And our second one, and again, easing it up to where we've got our two half hitches right there. And we're going to take the second cord. Now we're going to do our two half hitches over the top and ease it up and over the top and to the right and ease that one on up. And here's our third tying cord over the top and to the right. And the second knot with that cord over the top and to the right. And then we're going to take the core cord from the left side and we're going to do the double half hitch knot on our core cord from the right side. So there's the first one and there's the second one. Alright, so now you're actually seeing more of the chevron shape now that we've got two of the rows done. And so we're going to do two more rows. And now we're going to tie the left tying core cord to the right core cord. And again, we're getting that as close and tight as possible to the prior row. There we go. It's all done and it's actually going the correct direction. It's when finished it'll actually buckle into the buckle just nicely and now is probably as good a time as any to take our securing anchor cord off of the tongue of our buckle. There it goes. That's going to work out just nice. So now we're going to take a tapestry needle and what we're going to be doing is we're going to take each of our the cords to finish off and we're going to lay some down through the, the back side of the chevron. So the, the back side of the double half hitch knots and this is just going to secure our cords. Uh, lacing the, the cord ends down through here is called splicing and that's going to finish us off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually trim these cords because they're a little bit gangly. They'll be easier to work with shorter cords. So I'm going to trim those all off. And the way I thread heavy cord like this onto a tapestry needle is I fold it over the needle to help create a tight loop and then I just shove it through the eye. Alright, so we're starting with the, the center. I'm going to start with the center cords and work my way out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go I'm going to skip this knot and I'm going to go down and go through two of the loops on the, the back. I'm going to go 
that direction and then I'm going to change directions and go through to the loops this way. Then I'm going to take my second cord, going to thread it, and I'm going to go, I'm going to skip this one, I'm going to go through two of the loops on the back this direction and then I'm going to go the opposite direction through two loops and it doesn't really matter which two loops you go through And, you know, you are going to, at some point, start crossing. Alrighty. And there we have all of our cords all spliced in. Now it's just time to trim them all off. And there you have it. It's a buckle closure bracelet and the tab of the buckle can go through any of these sections right here either above or below one of the square knots. And there it closes. And there you go. It's a cute little bracelet. I like that one. And let's see how long this one is. Um, I do tend to make my bracelets a bit longer because I'm usually making them to fit me and considering I'm six feet tall my wrists are a little bit long bigger than most people's so this one's about nine and a half inches long so from one end of the buckle to the other end and you have to remember that a good half inch to an inch or so of this is going to actually be going through the buckle so it's good that it's it's actually when you're wearing it this is going to be more like an eight and a half inch bracelet because there's going to be a good inch of that is going through the buckle so there you have it this is our buckle closure bracelet with the single half hitch knot trim on the sides. Bit of lace work there with lovely star beads. So I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope you make it yourself and share it with me. So I, I like to see pictures of stuff that you guys do. So thank you and please subscribe and like my page and we'll see you next time. Bye.